Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Bath Talks. Today I'm going to talk about a pretty serious subject and I don't typically believe in trigger warnings, but maybe this one merits a trigger warning. So I'm going to talk about suicide. If that's a subject that's very, very upsetting to you, if that's a subject that you currently don't want to deal with, I invite you to turn off the video, watch something else, and maybe come back and watch it later when you're in a different frame of mind. So with that said, let's start. I'm going to begin by telling you a joke that I do in my act. I'm a stand-up comic and I do joke around about suicide in my act. And I'm going to tell you the beginning of a joke. The joke goes like this. I have an older brother who committed suicide. People say that suicide is selfish. It's not selfish. I got my own room. Decent little joke, and it's the beginning of a longer piece all about my brother. Now, going to the genesis of that joke, I really do have an older brother who took his life, and it has informed a lot of my thoughts my entire adult life. He took his life when I was a child, and I don't think that there's ever been a day when I haven't at least in some way thought about him a little bit. Uh, different kinds of thoughts. Was there something I could have done? Why would somebody do that? I wish he was still here. Uh, what do I really remember about him? Because, of course, when somebody takes their life, your memories of them end at that moment. The last memory you have of them that's positive is, that's it. It's a closed book, and you have to kind of generate that person again and again in your memory, or they just disappear. Uh, the other part of that joke is, I make a joke about how people always say that suicide is selfish. It's a very common refrain. Unfortunately, throughout my life, I've known lots of people who've committed suicide. And probably you have too. Uh, and everybody always says, well, suicide is so selfish. And in one sense, I understand that it is a selfish act because that person is not taking into account all the sorrow they leave behind through their absence. But I've also thought that it was weird to phrase it as selfish because, after all, it's their life. And isn't it in some way selfish for us to want them to stay? Aren't we demanding something of them when we say, no, you need to stick around despite your depression? So aren't we, in a sense, being selfish? I'm not suggesting that it isn't selfish to take your life. I'm just saying that the selfishness goes two ways because we make demands of each other. And maybe we could be a little more sensitive to each other's suffering. So in thinking about my brother, throughout my life, the arc of it has been that I've been at times angry, I've been at times pithy about it, and I think that I've come to a place in my life where I have a little more understanding of the humanity behind the decision, and maybe I could share with you, and maybe it would help us, help us all deal with the fact that sometimes people take their lives but also, if somebody watching this video is depressed to the point that you're considering suicide, I hope that maybe I can impart a little piece of the puzzle that helps you stay around a little longer to get the help that you need, because goodness knows we need you. I don't care who you are, we need you more here than we need you on the ground. I promise you that life is better with you here. So, when I was in my 20s, uh, Kurt Cobain took his life. I'm sure you all remember when Kurt Cobain took his own life. And in my 20s, I was a very angry man. And I was pissed off that people had the temerity to compare Kurt Cobain to John Lennon. And that they would do that in a lot of, on MTV News and in a lot of publications, they would compare the death of Kurt Cobain to John Lennon. And I got really mad. It, was, it pissed me off because I thought, well, there's no comparison. John Lennon was murdered. Kurt Cobain took the coward's way out. He took his own life. Because when I was in my 20s, I was very angry, and that's how I viewed suicide. I viewed it as a coward's way out. I viewed it as as selfish as you could be. Then I took a course in psychology in college, and I'm very deeply, deeply grateful for my teacher uh, when I went to college, who imparted just a small bit of wisdom that stuck with me which is this, if you had a friend who had cancer and that person went and got chemotherapy and they tried very hard to defeat the cancer, 
but they eventually died because the cancer ran its course, the chemotherapy didn't work, their body just gave out, you wouldn't be angry with them. You wouldn't be angry with them for losing their fight to cancer. You would understand that they had been infected with a disease and that sometimes the disease wins. That's just the truth of the human condition. Depression is a disease, not so different from cancer. It is a disease that human beings suffer from and we fight it and we fight it as best we can and sometimes people lose the fight. So for the survivors, let me suggest you reframe it in your mind and understand that that person wasn't really being selfish. That person wasn't not caring about you. That person succumbed to a condition, to a disease. Now, one thing we can do to help people who have that condition now is we have to do a better uh, job of taking away the stigmatism of it. If we just made it clear, look, you have a condition. You are not defined by your condition. Yes, you suffer from depression, but that isn't the only thing about you. You are many, many beautiful things and you have this condition that you need to address. You need to get your therapy. Sometimes you need medication, but it's a disease like any disease and you can fight it without shame. So we need to do a better job of removing shame from the equation. We need to do a better job of letting people know who are dealing with depression that it's just a condition. Your brain is such a weird organ. Unlike any other organ in your body, it feels different. You know, you're, you have your heart, you need your heart to survive, you need your kidneys to survive, you need them all to survive. But the seed of who you are is your brain. So we tend to have this idea that if there's something wrong with your brain, then there's something irreparably wrong with you. But that's not actually true. There's a chemistry going on in your brain that's not so different from the chemistry that goes in, on in your heart. It expresses itself different, certainly. The way that we experience it when something's wrong with your brain is different than the way we experience, say, something being wrong with a heart palpitation. But it's fundamentally the same thing. It's a part of your body that's not doing its job. So you just got to get help and you just got to try to address it. And if you look at it that way, that you are more than the sum of your parts, then you don't have to be ashamed. I myself uh, tried to commit suicide on two fairly serious occasions. Two fairly serious occasions where I wasn't just crying for help, where I made an effort. Uh, one of them was by pills, uh, and one of them was by knife. And uh, neither time do I think I really wanted to die, and I'm grateful that I didn't. And uh, my best friend in the whole wide world, he tried to get, commit suicide. I don't think that's why we bonded, but maybe. And I'm deeply grateful that I was there at the right time to help, to what degree I could help. And I'm deeply grateful that his lovely wife was able to help him but I'm even more grateful that he was willing to get the help that he needed and that he was smart enough to realize that suicidal thoughts didn't make him a bad person and that he just needed to understand that at, the, at that moment he was sick and he just needed to get well. And luckily for all of us, he's a little bit better. So I'm asking you if you're depressed and you need help, please get it. Uh, to try not to self-medicate, but you know what? If in the short term you need to self-medicate, go ahead. And it's not a great solution, but it's better than the solution of you being gone. Just know that self-medication is a temporary solution. I did that for a while too, and uh, it's kind of fun. But you tend to lose track of a few days when you do it that way. Um, you are loved. And if you don't feel it, that's one more reason to stick around. Because if you stick around, you can figure out who loves you and you can actually feel it. So I thank you for watching. And I got one last bit of advice. If you're feeling depressed, one thing I like to do is take a bath. So if you're bummed out, take a bath. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. 
bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.